September is here <laughs> and this month is a little bit jam-packed with a lot of retrograde planets. Saturn, Neptune, Pluto and Chiron is going to start off the month retrograde and then Uranus will join them. So Pluto is also going to be going back to Capricorn and this is going to be the last time it's going to be in Capricorn, savor that flavor of Pluto and Capricorn. The Sun of course is in Virgo which is Kind of one of my favorite signs in a way. Mercury is in Leo, Venus in Libra, and Mars is in Gemini. Mars will also move into Cancer during this first week, and then followed by Mercury going into Virgo in the second week. Of course, we know September the sign will shift to Libra around mid month, and then Venus will move into Scorpio and Mercury will then move into Libra towards the end of the month. Keep in mind, these two planets, Venus and Mercury, is always closest to the Sun. They're going to either be in a sign forward or a sign behind the Sun. There's going to be the new moon. In New York, it's going to be on the East Coast, it's going to be on the 2nd. On the West Coast or Pacific Coast, it's going to be on the 3rd, depending on your time zone is going to be the second second or the third so i'm going to go over the new moon in a separate video the full moon is going to be september 18th and that also marks the beginning of the eclipse season so if you want to change things about your life then the eclipse season is a good time to work on that let's just discuss a little bit about the sun being in virgo and since that's where we're at currently of course you know virgos are the perfectionists of the zodiac they strive of course to be perfect and that's mainly should be inwardly but sometimes of course we all project things out and virgo is you know no better <laughs> or virgoians the sun in virgo people are no better than anyone else they virgos are usually well presented but they're also very modest Virgo is the critic of the zodiac. If you have a son in Virgo, if you have any place in Virgo, just know that if you look into that placement, where the the sign the planet that your Virgo is in is probably where you're gonna be wanting to be more perfect or wanting to be more you know have criticism, especially sometimes towards other people if you don't try to let that stay inside most of us of course i am a venus in virgos i dish harsh criticism of course on the people and things that i usually love or care about we all experience criticism so if you hear someone that's critiquing try to maybe think that that's their virgo placement that's coming out that comes off as a negative thing but virgos are not necessarily negative what that is is you wanting to refine and to improve and you know most of the times this is coming from an honest place if you've ever been judged by a virgo just know like they are brutally also honest within themselves so imagine being virgo okay most virgos are introverted discriminatory discriminatory and hardworking. and the energy of virgo in general is just being competent in life since we're in virgo season that's the kind of energy that you want to kind of you know look at maybe proving criticism sometimes that's self-criticism and sometimes that's looking at you know how you critique others looking at how to improve yourself especially when it comes to work or your health especially now that the moon is going to be in Virgo in a few days you definitely want to look at health issues work issues anything about you know sometimes outdoor appearance those are the things that you want to look at when the Sun is in Virgo and especially that their new moon is going to be in Virgo too. If you want to enhance and change those things, now is a perfect time to do it. We're going to move to around mid-month when the full moon happens in Pisces. And that's when we have eclipse season coming. And hopefully I'll get some time and I'll discuss that a little bit more as well as the full moon. But as the month goes on, the sun is going to move into Libra. And then we're going to have the equinox and that aligns with the south node and Mercury will then be in Virgo, which opposes Neptune. And the sun and Mercury will form a grand triane and a kite with Uranus. With Uranus, Pluto and Mercury and Mercury is going to square Jupiter. At that point, the moon is going to be in Gemini, which connects with Uranus and aligns with the sun and Pluto. 
and harmonizes with Neptune contributing to this grand train and kite. When the sun moves into Libra, it's going to shine a light on our relationships, right? So we're going to move from looking at ourselves to looking at other, which is the seventh house, the house of relationships, which is the house that Libra rules. And we're going to be in Libra season. So at, this, at that point, we're going to start looking at, you know, equilibrium or harmony in relationships. You might find yourself open to compromise or at that point if you're not a compromising person maybe that's something that you could try to look at how to compromise with other people the south node and neptune oppose each other i think at this point and that's going to emph emphasize the importance of releasing self-denial this could signify the nece necessity to shed an old identity or approach to relationships it might be some type of loss related to the aspect of where Libra is in your chart. So as we're in Virgo season now, check out, you know, what aspects, if you have any planets in Virgo, you can check that out. And then once we move to Libra season, you know, make sure you look at where, you know, how what is affecting your Libra, wherever Libra, you could have sun in Libra, you could have moon in Libra. Just make sure you look at what, what aspects is in your chart. At this point, when the sun is in Libra, this could, you know, signify you moving into your authentic self. It also fosters harmony in relationships, creativity, because Venus rules Libra. Any deeper appreciation appreciation for beauty and arts, because Venus, of course, rules Libra. Mercury will be in Virgo at that point, and that will add some discernment, organization skills, and the ability to think through problems and communicate effectively. At that point, Neptune will, of course, be there. And, you know, sometimes Neptune blurs the limits between ourselves and others. Neptune could also inspire compassion and imagination. And this is excellent for you want to be creative or for any spiritual endeavors that you are interest, interested in. So just also keep in mind, Neptune could also Neptune could also be about deception, wishful thinking, confusion, and losing track of details just be careful with neptune and make sure you lean into your virgo aspects if you have sun in Mer virgo um, mercury in virgo whatever wherever virgo is in your chart lean into that that way virgo as a sign of perfection will make sure to you know do its checks and balances okay so the full moon of course you know the full moon is a combination of energy but be careful with this pisces full moon that's going to happen at the end of this month the, the grand the grand train and kite that's formed from this full moon will remain strong and venus will be there to encourage freedom and pluto will be there to deepen your relationships the, the moon will move by that point into at by the after the full moon the moon will move into gemini Be careful with that gemini moon because it will align with uranus and at that point may spark some restlessness and a need for communication. At that time, you wanna stay open to intuitive insights because of Uranus, but you also wanna be flexible and you know willing to adapt and change. Venus at that point will highlight healing in relationships and of course fostering creativity, but Mars will move into Cancer and this will signify a mix of vulnerability and protectiveness, especially when it comes towards your loved ones. There might be mood swings and also irritability, which may cloud your judgment and your emotions, but Saturn's presence, or you can lean on the Saturn part of your chart, which will help you to take proactive steps. At the end of the month, you want to start engaging nurturing activities, which can help to manage your emotions, but also make sure you know, you're know you leaning in also to your intuition, which is going to be crucial for making decisions channeling energy towards achieving your goals and and ambition so the sun and mercury is going to be conjunct in libra and this will align with the south node which forms a square with mars the moon will be in virgo opposing saturn and both will square jupiter in a t-square the moon will also form a sextile with mars Venus will be in Scorpio. This will create a harmonious triune with Mars and form a square with Chiron. There's a lot of play here with the planets, but the energy is saying anything that you initiate in, in August might come into fruition at this time. 
but mercury conjunct with mercury conjunct with the sun in libra is going to emphasize relationships finances and creative ideas and you want to use his energy at this time to engage in conversations because there will be balance diplomatic and and have a characteristics of fairness and also you also because of the alignment the sun and mercury will be in libra of course you know libra is the scale so you know at this point you will try you will more have a balanced perspective on things mercury is a sign of you know the mind will have a more balanced perspective on things and consider you know different aspects of an argument but there might also be you know some need with decision making because of course you know libra is a little bit shifty sometimes but libra tries to please everyone you might want to try to stand on your feet a little bit during this time to make sure you're making the right decisions because libra doesn't want to offend anyone they're kind of like trying to be in the middle but sometimes that doesn't work also a great time when the sun and mercury is in libra to you know do some writing and this might help to you could do some writing or engage in conversations of course because mercury is a sign of uh, social science doing writing or engaging conversation would be great and this could help you to gain a fresh outlook be careful though of because the mars would be in a square aspect to some of these planets it might be an increase in argumentativeness and this might uh, this might undermine your kindness and your efforts and abilities to be fair to people just keep that in mind at the end of the month with mars but of course mars is always a good planet just got to use it in a positive way mars being square some of these planets might help you to express some of your thoughts and feelings but try to do it in a positive way and that's more or less it for your september forecast <laughs> a little bit if you want to read a little bit about your individual sign make sure you go to my website to the blog and you'll see september's zodiac specifically for your zodiac signs that's on my blog go there and check it out and leave a comment and make sure you like and follow our page and stay tuned for the new moon reading and other things so ciao